and its energumen opening up a clear advantage at the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the head of the two mile novices. Energumen by Boyle Sports has it all. Money back meetings every day. UK and Irish racing live streaming. Extra places and money back all losers offers. And a bet 10 get 40 welcome offer. Boyle Sports, this is betting. And this is champ.ie. It is the final podcast of 2022. Thanks to Boyle Sports. But of course, now we've got the Christmas festivals behind us. We can start looking ahead. And there's about 12 weeks to go before you know what. And already looking as though they're going to put uh, 5p in the uh, pot towards their Cheltenham selections for everything they do. Uh, My two very special guests, uh, they are Barry Doyle, the founder of Champ.ie and the Irish field's finest, youngest, most talented tipster. Oh, no, it's (laughs) right. Great. Welcome, it's anyway, to you. our podcast, looking ahead to the New Year action, of which there is plenty. And also, we'll uh, look at the New Year's Eve action as well. And, of course, a couple of things at the start to remind you. First of all, obviously, thank you for your support. If you haven't done so, just find that button that says subscribe. It doesn't cost you anything. Just click on it. And then you will be part of this wonderful, unique, uh, no expense spared production that will take you from Cheltenham to Cheltenham. And we'll be going via the likes of Air Goran Park, Fairy House and a few other places along the way. So that is the first thing to do. The second thing you have to do is be part of it. You've got the comment section below. So do that. And what we want you to do is the five cast. We have five races that will make up the basis of this week's bet. You can win win a free bet. Uh, And Barry, I think we have some business from Christmas uh, to attend to. Uh, Some genius actually tip two winners and wins. Yeah, you have to have two winners or more to be able to chance uh, going into the draw the following week. And uh, we do have a winner to announce later on in the show. So, yeah, 20 euro free bet with Boyle Sports. And, uh, yeah, look forward to that later on, Mike. As you can hear, I'm dying. No, he's been dying for weeks. He's, he's been dying because the, the colours carried by the great inertia mean one a bumper at Leopardstown and he wasn't on. That's what's upset him. He's he not me. sick, he's just upset. Finished off anyway, the end, races like... we have for you are two from New Year's Eve, one from Newbury and one from Punchestown. And then we're going to touch on three races from the New Year's Day card at Cheltenham. And I'm sure Ronan, as usual, a mystic groom, would have looked into his crystal ball and he'll have found us something for perhaps Tremor or perhaps for Fairy House as well. But let's get stuck straight in. I'm delighted to say that we'll be hearing a little bit later from Adrian Heskin. The man who rides the McNeil horses is one of the many that commutes between Britain and Ireland, so to do. And he's got a big weekend, having ridden a winner at Doncaster on Thursday to end his year in star. But let's start with Saturday's Newbury card and the last grade one of 2022. And a very good uh, grade one as well. It is the shallow hurdle. And the first thing to say about it is how nice to see really competitive, decent field. It's run over two and a half miles, this. 14 go. Uh, There are two Irish challengers. And Ronan, if you try and do with the old elimination basis that I normally start with, you know, you're not putting lines through all of them by any manner of means. This is actually quite an open race as well. Yeah, I mean, it's it's great to see (laughs) where all these runners come from. Uh, like, uh, it's not usual. I can't remember the last time the shallow went this big, went to double figures, and it's well into double figures. So, uh, as you said, Mike, it's a great race. Great to see them. I suppose the betting would say that Hermes Allen is definitely the one to beat after he, he, he did so well at Cheltenham the last day. I think he impressed a lot of people that day. Question there. Is it drive for Briscoe for Willie's? I mean, I don't know where they race uh, among their respective teams at Clisutton and Cullentra, but I wouldn't say too highly. 
But still, what Hermes Allen did on the clock was pretty good, and you you couldn't really knock him for what he did. And and Nichols loves this race. He's won it the last two years with his best novices, Brave Man's Game and, and Stage Star, and gone on to the Ballymore with both of them. Uh, and he's definitely the one to beat. Now, obviously, the two Irish horses are interesting. Paul Nolan's more so the Joy of Machine. Uh, he was impressive last season. Uh, he, he was in the Facile Vega bumper at Leopardstown and then then won his his bumper impressively. And he's got off the mark over hers at the last time pretty impressively. He's got a chance. Uh, Accidental Rebel won the Persian War, which is often a good guide to this race. Uh, Fergal O'Brien's horse there, John Joe booked. Uh, I, uh, it's uh, for me like I, I'm very much looking forward to seeing it, but there's a lot of unknowns here, a lot of maiden hurdle winners like Nicky Henderson's horse there, Attaka. You just can't get a good read on them now. And I, I take a watching brief for me. For five cast purposes, I'd probably stay solid. Go with Hermes Allen. Uh, I was a big fan of what he did at, at, at Cheltenham. Uh, with, with a small question mark over the form, but we'll learn more about him here. This is a deeper race, obviously, and see see what he's made of. So I'll go with Hermes Allen tentatively, but um, I think there's better betting opportunities on our five cast coupon today. So we'll get stuck into that. Uh, attacker, of course, the Henderson horse carries the Altior colours. Barry, I just wonder whether some of these are in this race because it is the AGM of the Fasal Vega Avoidance of Cheltenham Society. Let's see whether we can get two and a half miles. Uh, what do you make of it? Um, I think he's very short the favourite. He, he, he doesn't deserve to be five to four, 11 to eight. And what he's done on the track for me so far, Her- Herman and Allen, as Ronan mentioned, like there's, there's plenty of unexposed ones in here. Um, Joy Machine, as Rona mentioned, obviously comes off the back of a, a very decent effort. A fairy house, Paul Nolan representative. That's intriguing. I wouldn't think he'd wanted uh, any more rain to get into the ground, so just be interested. Keep an eye on the weather forecast for him. And um, the better the ground, the better his chances. Vicky Vale was the one I came down on for the skeleton, it's almost identical profile to West Balboa. The finished second with this mare for the last season, six lengths. Um, by stage star Ronan said obviously Paul Nichols a fantastic recent record in the race he seems to target it as he said with, with his best novice Vicky Vale though she could be anything literally that was the, the the quote from the from Dan Skelton after winning at Hereford over two miles and three furlongs like West Balboa she was beaten at her point to point um, she finished second was just touched off for Aidan Fitzgerald at Burris House she's only had one run on the track and it was a phenomenal performance um, there was some decent enough yardsticks in the race and she's won by 17 lengths um, going away. She travelled really, really powerfully. She jumped well on debut. She shifted slightly to her left, I did think. So going, going left-handed is going to suit her. Um, but I, I wouldn't be surprised. She's related to Thomas Darby. I wouldn't be surprised to see her run a big, big race um, at odds of 9-1. to one. She'd be my play in here uh, against the short price favourite that to me he hasn't done enough to, wor- to, to, to justify going off the sort of price he's at the moment. I could see him drifting before the off. Fergal O'Brien's got three. He's, of course, had 100 winners this year, which is a terrific effort. I'd be interested to know whether um, who actually made the choice of jockeys. But the fact that uh, Paddy Brennan has opted for the Asker winner, Crambo, to me, I think is quite significant. Um, <coughs> but also, you've got uh, David Pipebrunner in there. Thomas Moore's done nothing but improve. He might be in It's one of those races. Really good and a tough start to the... Uh, weekend as far as the five cast is concerned. Well, let's move straight on. Then we've got Adrian Heskin coming shortly to Punchestown. And the feature race, the ground soft, is the um, Tyra Handicap Hurdle, a grade B, and a really good pot of €50,000 up for grabs. Field of 19. Top weight is Oliver McKinnon's Gatsby Gray, Philip Enright on board. They had a winner at uh, Limerick, of course, on uh, Thursday. There's the usual Gordon Elliott squad, uh, but there is nothing with the name W.P. Mullins in the trainer's column. So maybe this is a race for the also-rans. Um, and Jack Kennedy of the Gordon Elliott runners has chosen Rian. Barry, have first innings on this. Yeah, he was impressive at Cork. Uh, Rian on, on, on soft ground. You'd imagine he's going to be towards the head of the markets. Uh, Gordon Elliott, what a time he's, he's had with, with, with sharp price horses in, hand, in big handicaps. Uh, so far this season, big handicap hurdles, obviously. Uh, Maxim absolutely hacked up at Leopardstown. Um, Jungle Pro, she's put up a sequence. Rianne obviously is going to be towards the head of the market in this one here. 
Um, Gordon has, has plenty of runners in this particular contest. The one I like is Captain Comby. I could see him towards the front of the market as well. He's only a five-year-old, um, has had two runs this season uh, so far for the Sheehy Yards. Small yard, based in Greg Namana, County Kilkenny. Um, Kevin Sexton is booked for, for the ride. Um, forms worked out well today. He's stepping back in trip. He, he just, just touched off by She Wears It Well. I punches down in a pretend qualifier when last seen. Twice a course and distance winner, won a novice um, at Punchestown um, back this time last year. So I think it was in late January time. So Captain Comby, I'd say that has obvious claims. Stepping back and trip is, is, is interesting. We'll handle the track and the conditions. And I'd say off a mark of 133, the scope off that mark. So he got up a pound um, for finishing third to she wears it well at Punchestown when last seen. So I'd imagine it'll be fit. And and ticks a lot of boxes for this, Mike. That's Captain Comby. Interesting that the, the second uh, against Rian, uh, namely San Salvador, is in for the Joseph O'Brien JJ Slevin combination. We've had a really good week. Um, Ronan, uh, this is a complete minefield, isn't it? Sorry, I was muted there for a sec. Sorry. Um, yeah, San Salvador has got a chance, I think, to uh, to turn around the form with Rian. Um, uh, that he he was having his first run in a hundred days there, so might strip fitter now. Um, I do like Captain Comby. I like the case Barry made. I think um, his form, even you go back to this first run of the season, he ran second to Eric Bloodax, and that form has took a bit of a boost this week as well because Eric Bloodax was second in the in the per attempts that Maxim won. Had obviously no chance with the winner, but beat everything else. So that's a good run. I couldn't get away though from Barry Connell's horse here, and he absolutely bolted up at Galway. Uh, I'd be astounded if he didn't start favour off the back of that run. He's up fifteen pounds, but like if you go back and watch that race again, he travelled so strongly, took it up at the last, and 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 has absolutely gone away by seventeen lengths, like up the hill. Like you're waiting for the other runners to finish the race after being level at the last to to to, to pull that far clear was a huge performance. Barry Connell's obviously had another good week. A good winner today, uh, nice novice hurdler there, good land, and having a huge season. His strike rate is, is off the scales, really getting going now. Barry Connell is down in his place uh, just before the Fairy House Festival there to launch the, the, the launch for that Fairy House Winter Festival, and y you couldn't be not be impressed with the place, and I think he's a trainer really going places. So this grands the tie, as I said, I'd be interested. We don't think we have prices at the moment, but interesting to see what, what, what price they open it up. It is a very competitive hurdle, but he stuck out like a sore thumb here. He's got loads of scope to improve now on the second start of the season. He's only had the eight starts over hurdles um, and, and, and more to come from him off a mark of 122, I'd say. So uh, that you do for me. So that's the final race that we'll look at of 2022. And that is the handicap at Punchestown due off at 2.32, two miles, three and a half furlongs. And good luck with that because there will be any number of horses that will be uh, supported, even if you look further down uh, to the likes of the um, horse of Matthew Smith with Darrow O'Keefe up. Uh, what you're doing was a winner last time as well. There's umpteen of them in there with a chance. Well, still to come, we will look ahead to Cheltenham and the three feature races, the two big group races and the handicap chase on New Year's Day. And I'll talk to the um, Ronan as well briefly about New Year's Day because of course Tremor we don't have the decks yet after album photo who comes next into uh, Sweeney Todd's chair for the annual romp around Tremor for big money but a man who's got a very busy and potentially very successful weekend to look forward to is Adrian Heskin started of course alongside Michael o, uh, Michael o, uh, Hurrigan in uh, County Limerick and has gone on to be now the retained rider for the McNeil family. So he rides on both sides of the Irish Sea and particularly of interest, several of his rides at Cheltenham on Sunday, which of course is New Year's Day. And he is our special guest on this champ.ie podcast, talking to Barry. Boyle Sports has it all. Money back meetings every day. UK and Irish racing live streaming. Extra places and money back all losers offers. And a bet 10, get 40 welcome offer. Boil Sports, this is bet. Adrian, season's going well. A couple of nice winners over Christmas as well. Senior Citizen won today. Must have been nice to see him get his head in front again. 
Yeah, thanks, Barry. Uh, it's good to be back back on the show. Um, delighted with senior citizen today. Uh, we were half afraid he we had lost him a little bit there. He ran some great races around the entry over the big fences um, without winning. So we just decided to go back to regulation fences with him now for a couple of runs and uh, step him up and trip and definitely worked worked a treat today and uh, great to get his head back in front. Super, another winner over the Christmas period, Fingal Bridge. Now, he was mighty impressive. Um, Obviously, pulled 18 lengths here the second. Obviously, there's one well-supported, Three Cliffs Bay. That, unfortunately, came down in the running. But that looked a smart performance, Adrian. Yeah, it definitely did. Um, And, of course, we got a lot of rain there in Chepstow on Welsh National Day. So, he needed probably um conditions like that, a real stamina test to win a bumper because he's... um. He's a real stare in the making and, uh, of course, you had Evan Williams' horse giving him a run for it down down to the furlong pole, but we were just after getting back on top again and uh, he's a horse we're really looking forward to going jumping hurdles with now and fences down the line. It was it was a bonus to win a bumper with him, but uh, he'll be a horse definitely to keep an eye on. We'd like to think he could take a, a, a highish kind of rank over hurdles next year, so he might have another start in a bumper. Um, he's a Big, big, strong horse. So we're surprised he came to hand so early. Um, he might have one more go on a bumper somewhere there under a penalty. And uh, we'll keep him up our sleeve for next year. Please, God. Absolutely. We're looking at, I suppose, the, the featured racing this weekend. Obviously, we've chanted him on Sunday. Uh, a couple of entries for yourself, I suppose, the in one of the featured races, uh, the great races of the weekend. Of course, the Dipper, Novices Chase. Now, Thunder Rock, he, he was mighty impressive when last seen. Um, he seems to improve an awful lot this season, Adrian. He has sure, and um, uh, look, he, he he was very good horse over hurdles too. Um, I suppose he's 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 after winning plenty of races, but fences seem to have improved him another little bit. Uh, obviously stepping up um a fair way in grade now in Cheltenham on on Sunday. Uh, with the horse of Paul Nichols as Mon Moral, who is um very highly rated hurdler to, to beat but um, we like our lad an awful lot and we think um, the the race conditions will suit him to tee on Sunday so looking forward to him He's rated 150 now he's got up 15 pounds obviously since his first run of the season that was over 2 miles up to 2.5 miles now do you think we'll see an even better horse as he goes up and trip uh, I think we will and that's, that was kind of the plan you know you can always if you get beat the first day you can always go up and trip but it's very hard to go back and trip so we were we were happy to start him over two miles he obviously won over um, a stiff 2-2 two, two in um, Ascot the last day and I think we're Sunday's conditions of 2-5 uh, um, around a good stiff track will suit him ideal How far do you think he can go? Oh, sure, look, he's he's done everything we've asked him and uh, he's done it comfortably. So Sunday will tell an awful lot, you know. Um, it's great to get, get a start with him over fences around Cheltenham as well, you know. And uh, in the longer term picture, it's great to have a run around there as well. So um, you'd like to think that might be on the, the radar there in the spring. But the Wolf, he's a horse that ran a, a super race with Cheltenham on a season reappearance. Last scene, did he disappoint you? In the uh, the big one at entry, the uh, the beacher, wild sports beacher. Yeah, look, he's a he's a fantastic jumper. So it was kind of a shot into the unknown, taking him to entry for the beacher. But um, I think we had a standing start that day, and he's never the quickest into stride. And they always had him kind of on on the pin of his collar around there. But uh, he's ran some fantastic races around Cheltenham, and. Um, it's only a matter of time before he gets his head in front, but uh, he kind of, he'll decide that day himself. He's a little bit of a quirky character, but he was second in this race last year, so we're happy with him going there, and uh, hopefully this will be the day he can get his head in front. Back on decent ground, do you think that, that will obviously be helpful? Yeah, I think that will help him, and I think just the, the undulations of Cheltenham really keep him sweet as well. You know, as I say, he's, He's a bit of a funny character. He has some great runs uh, and great form back along. But, um, yeah, he's he has a big one waiting for him. But what day that will be, I don't know. Quaytonic is down to have his first run of a hurdles in the Relkeel. 
how's he been and is he one that maybe could be being overlooked at the moment yeah yeah possibly Barry um he's uh he was supposed to go to the the big handicap hurdle in Ascot there before Christmas um but unfortunately that was called off and uh I think the step up to two and a half miles will really, really suit him um we've often thought he mightn't be a Cheltenham horse but this is his first run on this uh, new course since his Triumph Hurdle run. So I think that track will actually suit him. Um, a stiff two miles in Ascot does suit him and he stays very well. So I've no problem seeing him step up to two and a half miles and I'm really looking forward to riding him. Yeah, super. Wish you well with him. A couple of the other entries just to mention then, obviously, Masaccio and uh, Rest be thank- Rest and Be Thankful two other entries either of those that you're, that you're looking forward to this weekend yeah I suppose rest and be thankful um, has lost his form a little bit um, I think he was running on ground that was maybe too quick for him there during the summer and albeit he was running well he wasn't inclined to let himself down and show his best so I think um, three miles were stepping him up and trip uh, he has a real good staying pedigree He'd want to show us a bit more now tomorrow, but I think the the um the race will suit him well. It's three miles and around the easy kind of track on a bit slower ground. That should suit him well. And um Masaccio obviously makes his reappearance again in the bumper. Um he's had a bit of time off, but his uh first two runs were very impressive. He won in Doncaster and then he was second at the air Scottish national meeting not beaten very far so looking forward to getting him back on track has to give away a bit of weight and um, them, them bumpers in Warwick often take a lot of winning but we think he's a very nice horse Super, super wish you well with him a couple of yards to, just to mention before we, we, we wrap up, obviously we've seen you back in Ireland, Adrian in recent times, big winner up at Down Royal earlier in the season, Magical Zoe, she was very impressive uh, she was definitely, and her form has been getting boosted every week since, um, to be fair. And uh, we were delighted with her that day. She went through her race very well and uh, won, won nicely. And um, she's obviously uh, quite short in the betting for um, the Mayor's Novice in Cheltenham. And uh, Henry has made the brave call of giving her a little break now and having her cherry ripe for, for March. So, um She's very well, and hopefully all will work out for luck there in, in March, please God. When you say we, she's had a break, do you think we might see her before then, or is, is the plan to go straight? Uh, there's a possibility she could have a run beforehand, but I'd say um, I'd say she could go straight there, to be honest with you. She's only uh, four, obviously, rise of five. She's had a, a long time in training without being overly busy. And uh, I think she'll benefit more from a break, more so than racing. So, um, yeah. Uh, yeah. And three card brag. Obviously, we, we, we saw you at, at Nace, was just touched off, well, in fact, was closing late to the line. Three card brag. He, he'd have to be a massive player in staying novice hurlers in the spring. Would he be an Albert Barton type? Yeah, I think you've hit the nail on the head there, Barry. Um, I'd say. He's unfortunate the year that he's fell on. It's been um it's kinda hasn't been too testing a ground anywhere, albeit it was soft in Nace the last day, but uh under over a trip a little bit short of his optimum. Um, as you say, he was flying home at the line. But I think if he had have had real stamp that test to now, he could be three from three, you know, over hurdles. But um I think yeah, he's gonna play play a big hand in the staying division um in the spring. Uh, Spartan Army obviously was impressive on, on, on debut. Did he disappoint you in greater company at Chester at Chepstow? Uh yeah, I suppose on the face of it we were a little bit disappointed. Um I got caught in kind of a, a poor enough position in the race, but it was it was a messy kind of race. Um and still I thought he had a big chance kind of after jumping three out and uh just got caught a little bit. I think the ground could have been a shade on the slow side for him. We didn't see the best of him, and uh, he's definitely a horse to keep following because um, we like him an awful lot at home. And 
yeah, things just didn't go right from the other day, but he could be seen again in the spring in a nicer type of race. And thanks to Adrian Heskin, good luck to him for the months to lie. Ed, he's not had an awful lot of luck with injuries through the years. it been brilliant to see him have uh, as good a second half of the season as he has the first half. So let's look then at these three races at, um, at Cheltenham, and we're going to look at them in uh, time order. So it's going to be uh, the Dipper, then it's going to be the New Year Handicap Chase, then it's going to be the Ralph Hill, and that's their particular order of preference. Let's just go for the racing in uh, card order. Final declarations awaited. Adrian Heskin here on Thunder Rock, who is two from two. And Barry is a major player here. Yes, he's improved an awful lot over fences. Um, this uh, Thunder Rock, he's gone up a total. Was it 15 pounds in total? He's gone up two starts over fences. Um, probably the, the best effort he's had was his most recent start. It was over two miles and three furlongs at Ascot. Um, it's going to, Mike, I don't know, have you a, a ground update for us, what it's going to be like by Sunday, but I'd imagine good is, is definitely going to be in the description. It's um, currently good ground, but, but the thing about the weather forecasting is there's been an awful lot of rain around, but it's been very hit and miss in various parts of the country. There we've had Leicester almost unraceable, soft, heavy ground in various places in the UK this week, yet uh, Taunton racing Friday go into Friday morning on good ground and Cheltenham is also going in uh, on the good ground on the new course, which let's remember has only staged one day's racing mm. because they were on the old course through November. They should have had two days in December, but it ended up as only one day because the second day um, the somebody gave Jack Frost a ticket. Hmm. Yeah, well, look, look, look I'm, I, I'm taking it that good is going to be very much to the fore in terms of ground ground description. I don't think um, you're going to be snorkeling. You don't want to snorkel and flippers, horse. I suspect yeah. it will probably ride good to soft, possibly. This race. Places, hmm. But it's not going to go all the way. Obviously, we're speaking before decks. So uh, th this race, I, I'd imagine, is going to cut up quite a bit. If nine entered at the moment, uh, in terms of declarations, Mon Morale, uh, Thunder Rock, they're going to run. Um, the real whacker has... Sam Twist and Davis up. He steps back and trip. Jumped very, very well to suggest that a step back and trip wouldn't be an inconvenience. But I think that Thunder Rock might just have too much for these. Um, he's officially rated two pounds higher than Mon Morel, who didn't impress me on chasing debut. Lots of people were raving about the match. John Bond versus Mon Morel. I can't have this Mon Morel one bit. Um, I'd suspect that he's going to, that this, this horse would be much better on softer ground. Uh, Thunder Rock. For me, he's the improver in here. Um, stepping up and trip a furlong again at Cheltenham. He's never raced at Cheltenham, so that is, I suppose, a slight worry. Uh, all these horses are absolutely flying at the moment, 20% in, in terms of strike rate. I love the way he travelled. He won off 135 at New Toxeter on the 28th of, of October um, and backed that up over two miles and three furlongs um, off 142. So he's up to 150 now. He's got up 15 pounds. He's the one to beat here. Um, and yeah, nine, nine to four. That's a bet, Mike. Um, talk about the real whacker. I mean, to me, the thing about this horse is I think he'd be short of price if he was trained by a Henderson or a Nichols. Um, and because he's trained by Pat Neville, it's uh, one of the reasons why he is a slightly bigger price. But I liked his run at Cheltenham, Ronan. I liked it as well. Um, Mike, the only thing I was worried about was it, it was over the three miles and most of his running has been doing, been coming over that sort of distance so far. Uh, coming back down on possibly quick ground, as you rightly point out, might just catch him out. Uh, I had the same worry for my the horse I like, Beauport. I've always been a big fan of him. I thought he was quite good in the Colin Parker um, earlier in the season and just disappointed the last time. But uh, he got beat by a horse that he had to concede eight pounds to Bally Griffin Cottage and I'd be a fan of him as well. And uh, his jumping just fell apart there at Haydock uh, towards the second half of the race. Um, but I wouldn't give up on Beauport. I just, I'm just i sceptical whether he'd even be declared here on good ground. Uh, I can see the case for Thunder Rock. I, again, though, I'm just not sure what he achieved at Ascot. He, he only beat three others there. I'm not sure what the form is up to. I don't think he's 150 horses he's been rated since he was only 135 over hurdles and he hasn't done enough to convince that he's 150 horse yet over her over, over fences. Mon Morale, 
look, he's, you know, a good standard juvenile hurdler. Uh, would have had a tough task last season racing against older horses. Um, and look, the one that came down to it, I'd be interested if it, if it does get declared is, is Nicky Henderson's horse here, Bold Endeavour, uh, especially on the good ground angle. I thought he did it very well at Leicester the last day. Uh, it was a big change from, if anyone watched Leicester yesterday and, and watched what they had to slog through there, it was completely different when he won Bold Endeavour. It was good to firm ground. Uh, look, he has a bit to find on ratings, but I, uh, just on the ground angle, that would be the, my way to look into it. So I'd be interested if he he's is declared there. for Newbury on Saturday. So yeah, okay. Well then, I think he, he's a, he might, you he might think it unlikely. Yeah, well he might not show the, here then. The trouble yeah. is in the summer, yeah, the ground can change so quick. Is the problem? Yeah, well he might, he has the option, I guess. So we'll see what happens. But I, I, if, uh, if, if in that case, I think Mom Morale would probably take take all the beating here. I, Oh, coming up and trip would suit him uh, much better than the two miles he ran over. The kind of juvenile hurdler horse that usually end up uh, going better over over a longer trip. So I'd, I'd probably take him over Thunder Rock. I think, think he could be a bit under, overrated after the Ascot one. Fergal Brown's horse, fascinating. Two 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 three three. That's not the, the mother in law's phone number. Poor horse. In, you know, play site is going to be horrible, can't it? Boyle Sports has it all. Money back meetings every day. UK and Irish racing live streaming. Extra places and money back all losers offers. And a bet 10 get 40 welcome offer. Boyle Sports, this is betting. Well, that was the 120 on Sunday at Cheltenham. Next, let's look at the 155. This is this uh, New Year's Day Premier Handicapper race over the same two and a half mile trip that the November, and although it was abandoned this year, December Gold Cup is run over. And uh, a, a field that is going to be large in number. And the question is, is it going to be as open as the numbers suggest? Um, Brave Cheska for Venetia Williams. Uh, I've seen a show of eight to one for this horse and has got top weight of 12 stone. Probably won't get the ground. Stolen Silver is the uh, another interesting one. Unseated on his only start. And then you go down and you see number nine at Midnight River. For the skeletons, Ronan, um, have first innings on this. Yeah, like the one you last named, Midnight River. I thought he was the real eye catcher in the Paddy Power, which I thought rode a good race this season. Uh, we saw what French Dynamite did, ran so well, uh, running in the Sables, uh, yesterday. So that kind of did his bit for the form there. And, and Midnight River was, was the, the eye catcher there for me. He was held up at the back of the field he had to make his grounds wide coming down the hill and uh, he only really really got going late on i think he could benefit from a stronger pace which he might get here uh the entries seem quite full at the moment that we would get a, a big field and possibly a stronger pace to run off and uh previously to that he was 25 length winner at Stratford. it just shapes like a different type of horse this season a seven year old with only six starts over fences so he's loads of scope to improve again i see Irodoto was in again but uh you know midwright liver finished ahead of him uh from a more unfavorable position i would have thought in the paddy power uh so i can see him confirming form with him warlord is a horse that i like over this trip to give him another chance i think he's a double figure price it ran okay first time up but uh, yeah, I was pretty sweet on Midnight River, I have to say here, Mike. Uh, I just loved his run in the Paddy Pair, and I think if he can improve again from that, he'd be tough to beat. Barry. The first horse you mentioned, Mike, Brave Shashka. He's uh, working himself up to to uh, close to graded level, isn't he? Brave Shashka. Won, obviously, last time off 12 stone one at entry. That was a, a decent return. He fell um, on his last start last season in the Arkle um, before... Um, obviously performing good against Edward Stone at Warwick. So that form has worked out quite well. He's stepping up in trip. You mentioned the ground. He definitely would be of interest here, Mike. I don't think the ground is going to be as big an issue to him as some of Venetia's horses. Um, and eight to one, he certainly would be a player. Uh, shake him up, Harry. He's one also on the short list. But ground, I think, is going to be an issue for him. Ben Pauling, I bet, is absolutely pulling his hair out. Um, he had him entered at least three times before ru eventually running him on good to soft ground at Exeter. He's going to want great um, rain. He's going to have five pounds for his win. He could be very well handicapped off 139 if he gets his ground. Um, he's a nine-year-old now, shake him up, Harry. But there's more to come from him, no doubt. Um, unless rain comes, I wouldn't entertain that. 
And Deran de Karjak, I see there's early support from once again. Um, he's an enigma. He's going to love a quick round. Finished fifth uh, when last seen. Obviously, was entered in the uh, Caspian Caviar. Um, and was on many people's shortlist for that again. Uh, fantastic lady, I think, is a solid option at a price at the moment. Nico's jocked up for Nikki Henderson. Uh, the form of her race when, when, when she beat Zambella by four lengths on her season reappearance is working out very, very well. Zambella's come out and won today. She's won twice uh, since facing Fantastic Lady. So that form is working out well. She's in off 11 stone one here. Um, she's going to handle the conditions. She jumps well. And I'd make her a player here off 142. Certainly Fantastic Lady. Looks a big old price at 14 to one. And uh, with everything considered, I think that'd be my play in here, Mike, at a double figure price each way. And of course, we also got in the race Amarillo Sky, who is two from two, having won at Cheltenham November and then at Newbury. Ben Pauling's also got your darling in it. I thought disappointed last time, but interesting what you say about Brave Saska. Remember, those runs last season were over two miles. This is over two miles and a four furlongs. We've got one more race to look at. Download the Boil Sports app and receive generous offers for new and existing customers. Boil Sports, this is betting. And this race is the Rail Heel. And uh, it's over two and a half miles. And of course, Adrian Heskin riding a Tritonic for Alan King in the McNeil Colours. Ollie Murphy uh, sends for Aidan Coleman to ride Brewing Up a Storm. Maurice Rock, the mayor, the eight year old, gets in off bottom weight. She's a major player. First Street, I like to move it. If they all turn up, this is great. Um, and you ignore Napa's Hill at, at your peril. Um, who wants first to go at this, Ronan? Yeah, if they all turn up, it'll be a very good race, Mike. Um, so, but I'm I'm sure a couple of them might come out there, uh, and and the race is priced up quite defensively. I guess why bookmakers thinking that this might cut up a tiny bit. Um, as you mentioned, Marie's Rock is obviously uh, the mayor's herd winner uh, over the sort of distance at Cheltenham, uh, having her first start of the season. Uh, I like to move. It was quite good, obviously, in in the Great Wood. And Napper's Hill seems like a change horse this season. It's really progressed where Nichols and it seemed, might have just got to the bottom of him. So he's interesting coming up on the trip. I have to say, though, at the prices of what I was looking through the race before coming on, I did think Botox has was was just a little bit underrated by the market. Uh, he's absolutely rock solid. Like he probably, you know, he suggests he mightn't have the class of some of these, but he is rated 150 and he does have to give weight away to everything here. But, you know, he's coming here off a career best, uh, having won uh, the uh, the what used to be the fixed brush there, I think was at the Betfair Exchange stairs hurdle now at Haydock. Um, that was over three miles in soft ground. But you go back to last season, he beat Bruin up a storm in the National Spirit over two and a half on good to soft. You know, that was a really big run. He's got loads and loads of good form at Cheltenham as well, which a few of these don't have. So I just thought 10 to 1 or thereabouts for him. Uh, I could see him coming in a bit if he is declared and this breaks up a bit. So if he did manage to get a word or, or see somewhere that he is, he's not jocked up at the moment, I've seen, uh, which might suggest that he, he's, um, you know, there's a bit of a doubt whether he runs or not. But if you knew he was going to run, that 10 to 1 looked, looked an okay price to me. Um, but with weight the decorations, I guess. Um, of those at the top of the market, I do like Mappers Hill as well. I think he's a potentially progressive type of horse this season that could excel over this sort of trip as well. And he's jumping much better. But Botox has was the one that I'd be looking for a possible bet angle here. Barry, agree or disagree? Um, I take Ronan's point about maybe it being priced up a bit defensively. I like to, I like to move it um, for the uh, the international hurdle. And I suppose if you like him for that, you have to like him for this stepping up and trip. I think he's he's going to be even better over. Um, a, fur a further distance. He's one of he went, up, he went up the hill in the Great Wood really well, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, um, he's won three times at the course. He's he's four wins, uh, from seven over hurdles. I I thought the front two, the pull miles here of of of, of the uh, of the third, um, Jim Coco was second, wasn't he in the Great Wood? Thought the the front two or two nights horses. Um, the further he went, obviously they took out the last hurdle as you mentioned. And the further they went, the better he, he looked. So I think stepping up and trip is, is definitely going to suit him. Good ground. 
Again, that's not going to be an issue to me. One at Cheltenham last time on decent ground in the Great Wood. Looking down to the field, Dasher Drasher, I think, deserves a mention. He's had two runs so far this season, two cracking runs. A lot of people have Noble Yates on their shortlist for a Gold Cup. He was, you know, only beaten three and a half lengths uh, by Noble Yates. That was at entry when last seen over three miles over fences, um, obviously in the many clouds. He returns to hurdles here. Rex Dingle's jocked up. He was a winner at entry on the season reappearance. Um, he's rated 152. He gets weight from those that we've mentioned. Um, I like to move it, I should say. And I would make him a player, like six to one. It probably is the right price for him. But if he drifted, um, I'd say he is going to run. And uh, he certainly would be on the shortlist, Ashton Rasher. But I'd expect uh, I like to move it to win this. And off three to one is probably fair. Yeah, I, I actually am a big Dashiell Drasher fan. He's not an easy horse to place, but you don't have many going to the Rail Keel who've won at Aintree and uh, and then only found an incredible turn of foot by the Grand National winner. Um, good enough to stop you winning a listed chase. Interesting. Well, those are the five, um, lads. Before we ask you to just confirm your selections for the five, just another reminder click subscribe because i'm sure you're enjoying every minute of this quite unique feat of rsc broadcasting and you want to be ensured that you get every week's notification of the next time that um the groom and the doyle and a few of their friends are put in front of the camera um but uh let's just touch on other things a lot more uh ronan one specifically for you because you, you know the groom intelligence network is Clearly, um, this Tremor race on New Year's Day, um, we don't actually know what is going to turn up. Um, it might be nice if it's a race rather than a procession this year. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think it could be, Mike. To be honest, I think Statler might run. And I'm pretty sure Manila Endo, this has been the plan for him to run here. I'm pretty sure Henry had mentioned that. Um, and that if those two did run, it would be in, definitely, definitely be an interesting race. Uh, Simon Allen though is like a 40 to 1, 50 to 1 shot for the Gold Cup. Like it's not the most craziest thing. Or I've seen uh, worse 40, 50 to 1 shots than a horse has finished first and second in the race. Uh, albeit he's a 10 year old now, or will be a 10 year old by the time uh, New Year's Day rolls around, like all horses. But um, yeah, interesting. And Statler, I'm, I know Barry's a big fan of him uh, coming back to around the, the extended 2 6 year uh, around. The likes of Tremor, I'm not sure would that be ideal for him first time up, but these horses have got to start somewhere. Um, so plenty of gold cup clues as well. I might throw you a few for Punchestown as well while I'm on, Mike, because I did the, the preview for that today. Uh, there's a horse called Stumptown running in the 1247, a handicap chase. Very interesting here, coming up and trip. Uh, it's only having its fifth run over fences. Uh, off a mark of 111, he's rated higher over hurdles. Uh, let's keep an eye out for him. Uh, and Somerville Boy, who probably ran in the Rail Keel hurdle uh, a few years ago, he's actually having his uh, stable debut now for Henry de Bromhead. He runs in a conditions race, conditions hurdle at Punchstown on New Year's Eve as well. I think he's interesting. He might just outclass a few of these. Uh, you know, he was running up to marks of like 150s, mid 150s last season. Uh, and in and, and what looks an interesting race with the likes of Jeff Kidder and Run for Oscar in there. you got horses coming kind of from all kind of walks of uh, different areas of the game. But uh, Somerville Boy struck me as uh, you know, the classy type in there that could benefit from the, the way the race is uh, weighted. He's, he gets weight from a couple of them and, and races off level weights with the rest of them. So there are two for Punchstown on New Year's Eve and might be able to get the viewers a few drinks that evening. Well, somebody's going to have to pay for the New Year's Eve drink bill, and with my track record, it won't be me. Uh, Barry? Yeah, just a couple to mention. One tomorrow, um, actually two tomorrow, at Haydock. Uh, Chris Sir Glory, he's going to be a sharp price. He runs in the uh, Novice Handicap Chase. I think there's only two runners in it. Sorry, three runners in, in the race. He's sharp price 8 to 11 at the moment. I'd expect him to win, but that's not going to pay for very much, Mike. Um, conquered all of Europe. Is a horse that runs in the three o'clock at Haydock. It's a handicap chase over three miles and four furlongs. This horse having just a second run for Don McCain over fences, having transferred from James Motherway in Ireland. He's had eight runs over fences. 
Um, seven of those obviously came in Ireland. Um, second run for New Stable. He's rated four pounds lower over fences than he is over Hurdley. Seven to one in the betting at the moment. Uh, Donald McCain, Brian Hughes. He's three pounds out of the handicap. He's in off 10 stone two. Um, I thought it was a really good effort last time um, when finishing four lengths off Air Valley Lad. That was at Weatherby on soft ground over three miles. Stepping up in trip. I think this uh, son of presenting could be well handicapped. And I wouldn't mind him being just three pounds out of the handicap. As I mentioned, he is uh, four pounds lower over fe- over over um, fences than he is over hurdles. I thought it was a real good effort on his first run for the yard. And I'd say he's a good each way bet there at seven to one. Um, I reckon that one's well handicapped. Um, another to mention, um, Mike, is uh, Blakenstop. Um, he's a couple of entries over the weekend for Henry Daly, um, but he is um, declared um, with uh, Tom O'Brien up for the 150 at Newbury. Um, over two miles and four furlongs in, in handicap hurdle. Um, he's looking for uh, to make it four wins on the bounce. I reckon he could still be well handicapped off 123. Um, that's in the 150 at Newbury. Uh, wanted to mention, obviously, Thunder Rock. I will have a bet on him. We had him in the five cast already. Um, and the other one to mention is in a bumper um, this weekend at Exeter. If it's declared a horse called Willmount. Um, we had Davy Boland on the show. Saw it win a point to point. I reckon this is a real decent horse. Uh, Willmount in a bumper at Exeter if he's declared for Neil Mulholland. Um, and I wanted to ask you about Anthers Craig, because I know you like that. That's also entered. Uh, yes. I I think um, they were slightly disappointed with what happened on its seasonal reappearance. Um, but I think that um, the Almighty and the Plumber need to have a full-scale row uh, before we see the horse again. In other words, it wants it to be bottomless. Okay, well, it's time to put it all uh, to bed. But before we go to the five cast for this week, um, reveal all Mr. Doyle about last week. There was Hector Hugo. So uh, do get in touch um, via, obviously, um, Twitter or uh, through uh, the uh, champ.e Gmail address. So champ.e at gmail.com. And we will sort out your free bet via Hector Hugo. So look forward to having a couple of people in this little drum next week, the boys yeah, sport, well, the golden chalice, help you or hinder you, depending which way you you like it. Uh, Ronan's got rid of his white beard and uh, red coat um, from last week, um, and Barry, um, let's lead off, and I'll throw my mind to confuse everybody in as well. So we go then. These are the five races, and let's go to the experts first. As we go through them, first of all, then the two Saturday races. So leg one is the Challow Hurdle at Newbury. Ronan Groom, uh, Hermes Allen, Barry, Vicky Vale, and That's I will good. go Crambo. Second of the Saturday races is the Tara, and um, that very competitive two and a half mile handicap hurdle at Punchestown. Barry. Hack the headled here, Captain Comby. <laughs> uh, you know, normally they sing Heart the Herald, don't they? Beecham's pills are just the thing. Um, uh, Ronan? Uh, going her grand's, <coughs> at, her grand's at the tie. And I'm San Salvador. Somebody has to be. So then we move to Sunday in these three races at Cheltenham to complete this for the year. Uh, starting with the Dipper. Um, Barry Thunder Rock Nap Ronan uh, Mon Morel I'll go Mon Morel as well Bad news, sorry Ronan um, We then go on to this New Year's Day handicap chase Ronan, have first innings on this uh, we'll Go Midnight River Barry Fantastic lady for Nicky Henderson And I'm going Shake him up Harry like the way you want to exit it. Yards in good form. And then we complete it with the Rel Keel. Uh, Barry. I like to move it. Ronan. Uh, I'll take a chance that Botox has is declared and uh, go with him. And I'm going to go Dashiell Drasher. 
Anyway, there's plenty to avoid in that little lot. But it's yours. Don't, don't let anybody cloud your judgment. Hope we've enlightened you a little bit. And uh, counting down towards the new year. Thanks to every single person, uh, to our sponsors, Sports Sports, for all their support during 2022. We couldn't do it without them. We couldn't do it without the owners, trainers. Thanks to everybody who've been uh, guests on the programme as well. And we will do it all again next year. In other words, in seven days. The guests, in no particular order, Barry Doyle and Ronan Groom. Happy New Year. From them, and from me, a very happy new year from champ.ie. Inside the final 150 yards, this is a special year. And it's a Hutton's for the break. And it's an argument opening up a clear advantage in the closing stages. A breath of fresh air over fences is going to stay at the helm of the two mind offices. An argument by... Download the Boil Sports app and receive generous offers for new and existing customers. Boil Sports, this is betting. Cheers, lads.